everyone. I'm Kayla. And I'm Becky, and we're with A Couple of Bees Read. And we also drink and review wine. Yes. So what is our weekly wine this week, Becky? I'm excited about this one, especially after reading about it. It's uh, from Fieldhouse 301, and it's their red wine. And I've learned a lot about it this week, so you notice my Christmas gift. So it allows the wine to breathe. Really uh, allows the notes in the wine to come. The air lets it out. Mm. 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 It's really good. Mm. It tastes like like almost bitter. Mm -hmm. but it has an acidity to it, yes. Yeah, there's like a, a fruitiness there that mm -hmm. I haven't tasted in the other reds we've tried. Mm -hmm. It I has like it. Um, raspberry in That's it. it. Yeah. That's it. Um, we've had, uh, it has blackberry as well, but I don't know that we've had one that's had raspberry no, in there before. I, yep. That was like, there's something else. And cranberry. <laughs> this one has cranberry and a hint of vanilla as well. And it does have that little acidic uh, taste in it. Um, this kind of makes it extra crisp in a way um, but what I found out about this wine as I was researching it so because I knew we were going to try it today is that it is made from several different red grapes um, it has Merlot grape it has a Cabernet Sauvignon grape a Pinot Noir those are your main grapes mm -hmm. that are in it and then they added there's like one percent or a little less than one percent of uh, what they call Grenache, and then a Gamay. Gamay is one of the older grapes um, and usually comes from uh, the, um, let's see, what's that? The Southern, it's in France, uh, Beaujolais mm -hmm. uh, area. And you're like, why do they add 1% of some grape? How does that help it? Well, it's like when you cook and you add a little bit of uh, dash of herbs or spice or something to it because we don't use artificial flavoring in ours we don't add sugar to it what you get is the grape and how it actually tastes and so that's uh, why we sometimes they'll be looking for uh, to develop a certain wine and they add just a hint of this grape and that grape and I've learned so much about uh, vineyards you know when you watch the movies there's always this big massive vineyard and you know it has the fermentation houses the tasting houses it has you know where they harvest it and there are vineyards that are that way and then you have vineyards who they may have their own grapes but they go out and purchase grapes from other vineyards so that they get the best because everybody doesn't grow a multitude of different types mm -hmm. you know so um, the best Merlot grapes went into this, the best Cabernet Sauvignon grapes, then the best of the uh, Pinot Noir grape. And so when you combine all of those different flavored grapes together, you get a very complex tasting wine. Yeah. And it's uh, another one of the wines that Scout and Sour has that's, it's not real expensive, it's very, you know, middle of the road uh, price wise. So it's a great wine to stock up on because people that like a good cab will like this wine. People that like a good Merlot will like this wine. So you can really, um, you know, uh, satisfy so many different uh, people that have different tastes in red wines. And so I, I really do like it a lot. And I know that, um, I will be ordering more to stock up on oh, for yeah, wine this tastings. Really good. And you know, I just want to say something about Scout and Cellar. Um, as a company, uh, they really reach out to their consultants, mm -hmm. and they they have a lot of really good training for us. And they listen to their consultants and their leadership team. So if someone out there is looking for something maybe you've retired and you want to do something else you know um if you're you know a, a stay-at-home mom and you'd like to do something interesting and you're into wine scout and seller is an incredible company to work with because they listen to their leadership team and they have really revamped everything um, the experience for the consultants to really give them more incentives that 
in ways that they can help their customers because they're all about serving the best clean crafted wines they can to their customers and to help their consultants in any way. So, you know, if, if it's something you're interested in, they have a lot of things going on like right now, send me a, a message and I can, you know, uh, talk to you more about that. But it is a fabulous company to work for and it's still relatively a new company. Uh, most of the consultants actually a large majority of them are in Texas. So if you live in Alabama or, you know, Georgia, Mississippi, uh, any, some of the Western, uh, middle Western states, I mean, it's wide open. So mm -hmm. you have a great base to grow a business in. So I would say, you know, get in touch with me about it because it would be a, a great opportunity. I know I'm really looking forward to growing my business and, you know, what, better way to do it than with a fantastic product that everyone likes. I've, I've not met anyone yet who has not liked the wine. Yeah. Okay. And that's true. The wine is fantastic. And if you want to contact Becky, you can comment or you can message us on Instagram, Twitter, send us an email on the website, uh, whichever works for you. Definitely get in touch with us to, though. Also, if you want this specific wine, check the link mm -hmm. in the video information and head over to Scout and Cellar. Look for this wine. It is delicious. And I can't believe when you said that it was one of their less expensive mm -hmm. wines. Mm -hmm. Because when I first took a sip, I was like, oh, this tastes expensive. Yeah. Um, well, I think it goes back to the clean crafted commitment that we have. That means no pesticides. We don't mm -hmm. add um, artificial ingredients to it. Uh, everything is, it's just an authentic flavor of the grape that you get in the wines. And that's, uh, that's why I like it so much. It's very good. So, on to our book this week. And um, this is The House in the Orchard. It's one of my aardvark picks. And it took me a while to read it because I did not expect to like it as much as mm -hmm. I did. Um, I'm not in love with the cover. It just doesn't tell me a lot about the book. Right. So, when you hear the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover, I shouldn't have because this is a fantastic book. I read it, let's see, I started it Friday and I finished it Saturday. So I knew you finished it really quick. Yes, it, like I said, I was surprised at how good it is. It is a gothic novel kind of in the style mm -hmm. of Daphne de Moore. So like if you enjoyed Rebecca, mm -hmm. um, you should have, because that's your yes, name. That's right. <laughs> but if you enjoyed Rebecca, if you enjoyed Jane Eyre or even Wuthering Heights, it kind of mm. has those sort of notes oh, in it. Yes. I love um, Wuthering Heights. Yes. Especially reminded me of Jane Eyre because to me, the end of Jane Eyre is a little bit of a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. You're like, is there a villain to this story? I don't know if there is. Who is it? Because of everything that happens in that book. Well, this kind of ended in the mm. same way. Wow. Um, like, very different story, very different situation. So, this book deals with Peggy, who in 1945, her husband has inherited the house in the orchard from his aunt Maud. When Peggy goes to see the house, much to her father-in-law's dismay, because her, her husband was killed in World War II, she takes her son to see the house. Father-in-law's really not happy about it. And she finds a diary from Maud that was written, started in 1876. So for those history buffs out there, there's a lot going on here. You have this sort of the culture war that was taking place right. at that time, mm -hmm. like the blue stockings. Mm -hmm. um, and Maud is, in the beginning of her life, raised as this proper lady who reads but not too much and is not a blue stocking. Heaven forbid women get an education. Oh no, what are they thinking? <laughs> and it's funny to see because she's, I believe at the time she's writing, she's supposed to be this 11 year old. So it's fun to see her kind of grow. And when her parents die, she goes to live at Orchard House with mm. her father's mistress. Oh, interesting. That, you know, the, that was really taboo at the time. Nobody seems to be happy about it. And her his her father's mistress is a blue stocking, 
a notorious one. Mm. So she starts to sort of change her ideas and beliefs. And there's this struggle in the young girl where she's trying to figure out who she is versus who she wants to be. And it's a really interesting story. I could not put it down. The way she writes, even though she's writing, you know, most of it are these diary entries. Mm -hmm. I just, I was like, well, what's going to happen? How is this child going to change? And I became more interested in that even than I did in the, like, the gothic thrill side of it. Um, And there are some kind of suspenseful, spooky scenes. Right. But the big thing is just this journey of, from youth to adulthood of a young girl and then the tragedy that kind of changes her life because there is some of that towards the end and you hear the whole story from her point of view and then in the end her brother as a grown man tells part of his story and you don't know who to trust it is one of those if you like your endings wrapped up in a pretty little bow this might not be for you yeah. but if you like a good mystery and you like characters who are going to make you think and evaluate and try to figure out what is going on this is it it was such a great read I'm going to recommend it to my English major friends, but I will also recommend it to anyone who just enjoys a good coming-of-age story. I love those, so definitely check it out. Okay, that sounds great. And by the way, Aardvark, I need to know your vetting process because... I have yet to read an Aardvark book that I didn't love. I know, me So I don't know if they're like, reading my mind (laughs) (laughs) or what's going on because every book I've read from them is very different yes I think I've read a book I haven't read a romance from them yet but I'm going to I have one that came in this month yeah uh, well the one that got lost in the mail and then they sent me yes you know I got it in a matter of days um yes I have that one so so but every book no matter the genre I have picked up and not been able to put down. So if you haven't looked into Aardvark, they are cheaper than other book clubs. Uh, They're a great gift if you know a fan of literature who's got Hmm, a birthday cup. I just happen to have one. I know, I know. Not because right now I'm getting them still for my Christmas gift. That's right. The gift that keeps on giving. Absolutely. So definitely check out Aardvark if you haven't already. And check out this book. Because it was like five out of five easy. Mm, five stars. Great. Well, I'll yeah. keep it on my list to read, although All it keeps right. growing. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll get there, though. Okay. <laughs> uh, y'all have a great week. And remember, contact me if you're interested in Scout and Cellar Wine. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Bye.